We're in the, in the middle of May, so obviously, um, as we explained a little while ago in one of the earlier updates, we've missed the 75th anniversary of D-Day deadline in, in June, but that doesn't mean to say that there's, there's not a lot of things going on in the background. We're sort of probably at a bit of a stage where it doesn't look like there's a huge amount of visual progress, but, um, you know, the devil's in the detail, really. There's lots of sort of things going on internally. Yeah, so, so one of the things that, you know, from a pilot's perspective that, you know, is, is quite exciting from my point of view is, is the instrument panel and the cockpit coming back together. So Chris and Tom have been working really Really hard on the instrument panel itself and, uh, and now Tom's busy you know finding all of the original dials and gauges cleaning them up and getting them in the front and that means that we can start putting the cockpit back together and building it back up really so the rudder pedals can go back in the control columns and it'll start looking like a cockpit again so you know Tom, Tom and Chris have done a, a tremendous amount of work on that and um, yeah I can't wait to see it finished. Well I'm Tom um, myself and Chris from the Jet Bay have been working on the instrument panel for the last sort of couple of months on and off. Through the guys at Aircore Library, we got the drawings of the original panel. We tied it down to the serial number of the aeroplane to get the right layout. And through that, we've got this layout drawing and another drawing of the actual panel cutouts. And we managed to get the panel water jet cut and finished with all the anchor nuts on. So it's all ready to go. That's now in the aircraft. Paul's been busy. He's cut down the back of the old autopilot. So we're gonna make a false front in this part here where all our modern avionics go and then we can just slave the original autopilot bits in there and make it look as original as possible. The centre console we took out, we were originally going to leave it in and just overhaul it but the, the plan changed and we thought we'd end, we'd end up taking that out and it's a good job we did because it really needed a good, good overhaul. That's all been cleaned right down to bare metal, repainted. Paul's had to change a couple of cables I think at least and it's all gone back together as per original. Yes, yeah, it's been a long road but we're finally at the end of it nearly. It'll be nice to get them all in and uh, finished and get the thing flying again. In some other exciting news, we've been working hard over the last couple of months on our new website. Still the same address, www.night-fright.com, but that's been completely revamped. Got some cracking new merchandise on there, some new t-shirts and, and some caps and other bits and pieces. Keep an eye on all of the social media channels as well, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as usual. And also check out the guys at Infinite Pixel and River. Joe's still doing an absolutely fantastic job, job for us there. And, and obviously, you know, as we approach the first week of June and the 75th anniversary of D-Day, you know, check out World War II Nation and uh, Dax Urban Normally, plenty of cool DC3, C47 stuff going on, you know, besides Night Fright. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. Speak to you soon.